thousand times. I never go back to that swamp. What's going on, everybody? This is Sean with Strangeland Oddities. We're at the New Jersey HorrorCon, and I am with here with Perry Shen. How are you doing today, Sean? I'm well. Thanks for having me. All right. So how did it end up uh, hooking up with Adam Green and then the part in the hatchet? And whose idea was it to have your character come back in part two, three, and in Victor Crowley? Uh, it was just standard audition. I came in. It was like the... F I had four auditions that day, and it was by the end of the day, I was real tired. And I kind of didn't really give a crap because I was just so exhausted, which is usually the best thing because you're less in your head, usually when you don't care, <laughs> and you just let loose. Uh, and I was loose because uh, I just wanted to just do it, you know. And, and it was a big reaction, Adam. And the producers laughed when I did the accent change uh, on the boat. That was my audition. And then... Um, after doing the first one, we had such a great time. Adam was like, oh, I love the cast, but I can't bring anyone back because I can't work with them because I killed everybody. And I said, well, in the first one, I do mention that my brother got me this touristy gig, so he does have a brother. So um, that's all I'm saying. And then so I, I think I inceptioned him a little bit, and he thought about it and found a way to logistically figure out a way to bring me back by, you know, because the, the second one takes place literally a second after the first one ends, so it makes sense that his brother would look for his brother that he hooked up with that job, and it happens to be a twin brother. And, uh, and then the third one, at that point, it just been like people had expected it, so I just kind of uh, show up with when I put the stuff down, uh, the paramedic. Um, but then uh, we sort of, with Victor Crowley, uh, put a little bit, just to ground it a little bit by, um, and it also wrote, kind of wrote itself where Andrew was sort of um, accused of doing these murders, not only because he was the only survivor of the bio, but bio butcher uh, murders, um, but also his DNA was found on uh, two of the victims, which were um, Justin and Andrew. And so it's alluded to that, you know, I was like t telling Adam, like, we have to give some explanation why all the Asian people in this universe look the same, right? So there, it, it's alluded to that, that Andrew doesn't know how, why his DNA is on his, these guys um, on the on the bodies. So, um, so maybe there was some sort of separate at birth situation. Maybe there was triplets, and then the other one died. You know, thought to be dead, and you know, so something like that. Maybe for the the fifth one to explore. Nice. Now you did a voice improv on the Wild Thornberries as the voice of the dog in the yeah. episode "Dragging Me Along." Is that where you met Danielle Harris, who later starred in Hatchet with you? Uh, no, I I did not work with Danielle at that all. Um, I worked with just one other actress, Erin uh, Quill, and we both played two dogs, two animals. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I had I didn't interact with Danielle at all. And being part of the Hatchet family, I know Kane Hodder is a prankster he likes to do jokes were you ever a part of any of Kane's jokes um yeah but it's, it's my fault because Kane he he in Victor Crowley it was sort of in a in a clean lake and um he he started peeing in, in the lake and uh and in the scene where I am escaping Victor Crowley through a hole in the plane um, I thought it'd be cool, Laura and I thought it'd be cool if we actually submerged ourselves in the water to come out instead of just like coming out and they would spray us with water and we're like, let's get method and just go into the water and come out and I was in there and it called action and I'm like flailing and gulping water on purpose and then as soon as I gulped it, I'm like, oh my god, why did I do that? And and it's not even going to be able to, the camera's not even going to read it. And um, of course, they didn't even use that shot. The show is just barely coming out of the, the water. So I drank Kane's piss, like, voluntarily. Now, that's an interesting fact right there, drinking Kane Hodder's piss. Now, out of all the roles that you played in The Hatchet, which one of the roles were your favorite to play? Um... Sean, of course, just because he was just so off the charts. I mean, you didn't know what he was doing with the different accents, and he's just trying to, you know, make a sale on these uh, boat tours. Um, 
But it's a tie because with Andrew, when I played in Victor Crowley, I didn't have to start from scratch for the first time. Because every time was like a new character with, because they, they all died, right? So this one, like he lives, so he has a backstory and like how has he changed in 10 years and how is he the same? So that was a lot of fun challenge work as an actor. Right. Now, a fun fact that, uh, which you're not credited in, but you're in Starship Troopers mm -hmm. for a brief moment. And another fun fact is that he's done voices in numerous video games. Uh, one of my favorite is Sleeping Dogs. Um, can you give us a little insight about Sleeping Dogs? Um, I play Winston, the mob boss, the, the guy who takes way under his wing uh, in the triads. And uh, it was great because I got to play a bad guy for the first time. And because it, it didn't matter what I look like, they just will, you know, so in the, um, at Activision, they just put those dots on my face and um, microphone near me and the camera's all over. And uh, I just put on a voice like this and, and I'm like, this guy is like this tall, but in the game we're reversed, like I'm taller than him. So it's, it was really fun. Um, and the game's really good too. Yeah, I think the ending should have been a little bit better as far as... Uh, oh, right, yeah. I always said that uh, Winston should have probably been the boss fight with Wei just because... Um, Winston never got to under see that Wei was a cop and to feel that betrayal and that, you know, being torn that he was, uh, you know, he's his brother now, but at the same time he's, uh, you know, he's his enemy. So, yeah, I think that should have been the boss fight. But a lot of people are sad when Winston kicks the can at his wedding. Yeah, I think that should be turned into a movie. Hint, hint. Um, so now, 2013, you started working on General Hospital. Um, what made you decide to, you know, go the route of a soap opera after, you know, being known for doing Hatchet? Honestly, I kind of uh, thought I saw it all. And uh, I've been acting for like almost like, at that point, like 17 years, 16 years. And I was like, I've been in small movies, big movies. TV shows, uh, voiceovers, book I mean, I've done every single medium possible, and I kind of like, you know what to expect. And uh, you kind of get like, okay, I know what I'm doing. And then once I got on uh, General Hospital, um, it kicked my ass in, in a really good way from complacency because, uh, let's just put it this way, in a movie, a script is 110 pages. You take about two months to shoot it, and General Hospital, we do that in one day. So it's fast. I mean, we are on every weekday, so we have to shoot 250 episodes a year. So we got to go, 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 and a lot of material fast. It took every trick up my sleeve as a veteran actor for like the first three months just to keep pace. Uh, so uh, yeah, it's life. I didn't think I'd be in horror movies. I didn't think I'd be a soap opera. So it's like an interesting journey. So I don't really. I kind of take whatever comes my way and try to make the best out of it. And, uh, you know, I, I'm not, I, I, I have a, I don't really say, no, not really. I kind of always look at all the opportunities and go like, you know, yeah, even like small movies. I will do a small, small movie for like a, a up and coming filmmaker if I think, hey, this is great. I'm not seeing any of this stuff. I'm not going to be waiting around on my ass, you know? Right. Excellent. All right, well, we're going to cut this short because uh, it's about to get open here and it's about to get busy, and he's going to be a busy man with all his fans. But I do appreciate you taking the time out. Um, before we um, sign off here, uh, what do you have in the works? I did a, uh, a sci-fi movie, a tra time travel movie with Bria Grant. Uh, she's on Heroes, um, and she, uh, she co-wrote this, and it's called Death of a Thousand Mandolins, and it's a... Uh, husband and wife team that created a time machine and uh, they mess up and multiples start coming of her every day from the future so we have to find a way to, to get rid of those <laughs> people until we can figure out this this looping situation so yeah I'm really looking forward to that nice all right everybody this is Perry Shannon everybody definitely check out his movies if you haven't seen Hatchet in the Hatchet trilogy and Victor Crowley definitely check it out check him out on General Hospital Play Sleeping Dogs. It's an amazing game. And Strangeland is out.